What are scientific explanations? When you have completed this lesson, you will be able to define empirical evidence, understand scientific explanations are based on empirical evidence, define hypotheses, scientific theory, scientific law, and pseudoscience. People used to think that because the earth was flat, you would fall off the edge if you got too close. Careful observations and experiments provide us with new information that may change or confirm what we know about the world we live in. People used to think that living things could come from non-living things, such as flies and beetles, from rotting meat. They believed mice and rats came from household garbage or a stored grain. They called it spontaneous generation. Empirical evidence is the cumulative body of observations of a natural phenomenon. Science is limited to phenomena people can observe with or without instruments to aid observation. Empirical evidence is the basis for scientific explanations. When I was in ninth grade and a farm boy, one of the popular questions was, how soon in the spring can we plant our corn and expect it to germinate and have an adequate population? In those days, no one would plant corn until May 1st. The agricultural extension specialists were reporting a minimum of 55 degrees Fahrenheit in the germination zone for adequate corn germination and emergence. The recommendation now is 50 degrees. I decided to monitor the soil temperature starting on April 1st to find out when the soil temperature reaches 55. I also monitored the air temperature. I took readings from both thermometers every morning at 7 a.m. before the school bus arrived. I did this for 45 days. All of that data I collected is called empirical evidence. Not only did I learn when the soil temperature was warm enough for planting, but I also learned the effect of air temperature and soil moisture on the warming of the soil. I included this study in my Supervised Agricultural Experience Record Book. The Voyage of the Beagle is the scientific journal written by Charles Darwin and published in 1839. The Beagle sailed from Plymouth Sound on December 27, 1831. The expedition was originally planned to last two years, but it lasted almost five. The book is a vivid and exciting travel memoir as well as a detailed scientific field journal covering biology, geology, and anthropology that demonstrates Darwin's keen powers of observation. I read the book while I was in high school. It was not an assignment. I was passionate about learning more science, and Darwin's writing style was exciting. The scientific journal is the empirical evidence to support Darwin's later theories. If you plan to be a biologist, then consider this book as required reading. Scientific explanations provide the reasons and a description for how a natural event occurs. If someone asks why some tree leaves turn red and some turn yellow, we look to a scientific explanation. Why do we have to put the milk in the refrigerator when we have not opened it yet? Why don't we have to put the can of condensed milk in the refrigerator? How do we make cottage cheese? All of these questions are needing a scientific explanation. Our answers need to be based on empirical evidence, not on feelings or misguided or unguided guessing. How good is the empirical evidence? Is it based on data collected when following the scientific method? Actually, the scientific method as we know it today was not developed until about 1883. The accuracy of observations and measurements is vital to the quality of the empirical evidence. 
When I recorded soil temperatures, how accurate were my thermometers? Did I always have the temperature bulb at the same soil depth? Probably not. I didn't follow the scientific method because my original intent was to find out when the soil reached 55 degrees. Charles Darwin didn't follow the scientific method as we know it today when he was recording his observations while on his scientific voyage. I am sure he was extremely accurate at recording observations. Both of us were able to make some conclusions that over time proved to be accurate. Following the scientific method, as you will learn in a later lesson, provides more accurate and reliable data. Scientific explanations are limited to those that can be tested and refuted by experiment and observation. Scientists today still go to the same places Charles Darwin explored and can observe the exact same things. Scientists consider empirical evidence, logic, additional observations, and test results when they create an explanation and decide whether they think it is valid. One thing that sets science apart from other areas of study is its need for openness and review. Scientific ideas must be testable and reproducible. When new information emerges, scientific explanations are re-evaluated and possibly modified. How do we evaluate a scientific explanation? We start by examining the empirical evidence. Were the observations accurately collected and recorded? Is the explanation logical? Does it contradict other explanations? Can it be tested? Can other people conduct the same test and get the same results? And finally, will it withstand the examination of other scientists? We call this the review process. We have three important words dealing with scientific investigations and scientific knowledge. We will examine the definitions and understand the differences between hypotheses, scientific theory, and scientific law. These concepts will be covered in more detail in future lessons. A hypothesis is a testable idea or explanation that leads to scientific investigation. It often is referred to as an educated guess. Sometimes we hear someone announce, I have a theory, but what they really have is more likely a hypothesis. A theory is a system of ideas that explains many related observations and is supported by a large body of evidence acquired through scientific investigation. Think of theories as a description of how things happen. Scientific law is a descriptive statement or equation that reliably predicts events under certain conditions. Laws describe principles of nature. Laws describe what occurs rather than how it occurs. Pseudoscience is a process of investigation that in one or more ways resembles science but deviates from the scientific methods. Pseudoscience can seem like real science, but pseudoscientific ideas are based on faulty logic and are supported by claims that can't be tested. For example, water is the leading cause of drowning. 100% of all people exposed to water will die. Now that's a silly example of faulty logic. The pyramids are built by people from a different planet and that cannot be tested. Let's try some quiz questions. True or false? Scientific explanations should be based on empirical evidence. The correct answer is true. True or false? Scientific explanations do not change. The correct answer is false. Scientific explanations must always be subject to change. New evidence can be discovered and better testing equipment can become available. True or false? Scientific explanations are limited to those that can be tested and refuted by experiment and observation. 
The correct answer is true. If an explanation is not testable, then it cannot be a scientific explanation. True or false? A hypothesis is an educated guess about a problem. The correct answer is true. True or false? Theories are a description of how things happen. The correct answer is true. True or false? Laws describe what occurs rather than how it occurs. The correct answer is true. True or false? Pseudoscience is a process of investigation that relies on the scientific method, is logical, and can be tested. The correct answer is false. In this lesson, you learned the definition of empirical evidence, that scientific explanations are based on empirical evidence, and the definition of hypotheses, scientific theory, scientific law, and pseudoscience. For the lesson plan with worksheets, lab exercises, crossword, and answer keys go to www.sparebrickschool.com. Thanks for listening.